ंदुसंयुक्त नित्यम ध्यान कामदमोक्षदाय नमो नम नम समय साराय स्वानुभूति चक्षुतमीर्थंकर जगत न जयवंत वर्तो ओंकार नाद जिनो जयवंत वर्तो जिनना समो शरण सौ जयवंत वर्तो ने तीर्थ चार जग मयवंत वर्तो नमो तीर्थ नायक ने नमो ओंकार नाद ने ओंकार संगर तेण नमो ते श्री कुंद कुंद ने अहो उपकार जिन वर्णो कुंद नो ध्वनि दिव्य नो जीन कुंद ध्वनि आप्य अहो ते गुरु कान नो अहो ते भगवती मात नो ध्रुव ध्रुव अचल ने अनुपम गति पामेल सर्वे सीधने वंदी कहू सुत केवली बासि समय प्राभृत अरे एक सुद सदा अरूपी ज्ञान दर्शन मय करे कहीं अन्य ते मारुचरी परमाणु मात्र नथी चमनेत्र ते मुझ ज्ञान निका रक नथी वेद करे जाने ज कर मोदय निरजरा बंद ते मज मोक्ष ने ओम नम सिद्धेव्यो ओम नम सिद्धेव्यो ओम सुधात्मा ने नम जय जिनेन्द्र एवरीबडी <coughs> so we are here with the uh, uh, gatha number 4 uh, let me bring the slides here uh, gatha number 4 is over here yes <clears throat> okay so we'll just read the gatha first and then we'll continue progressing further sud parichidano buda savvasavi kam bhog band kaha e yat suvalambo vana varina sulaho vihatassa सुत परिचित अनुभूत सर्व ने काम भोग बंदन नी कथा परती विजुदा एक उपलब्धि केवल सुलभना सो दिस इज दोर्थ स्टांजा दट वी स्टार्टेड लास्ट वीक बेसिकली इट से दट दिस इज इन कंटिन्यूशन फ्रॉम स्टांजा नंबर थ्री actually to start with stanza number first will give you uh, uh, kunkun swami gave the uh, invocation blessings and he said that i uh, am establishing all the siddha bhagwan in my heart and that that's that after i'm going to start this story thereafter on the second stanza 
right away he goes to differentiation between the um, swasamai and parsamai, my nature of the innate nature and the non innate nature. Having said that, third stanza, what he said, that the every substance in their own innate form, they are beautiful. And when they get when they go in the diluted state, then all the mess occur, and then then they lose their beauty. And in the fourth stanza, now he says that for time infinite, the soul has worked with the diluted state only. When now, when the soul was in the nigod, the lowest possible form of life, he also had the dependency on his body and said that body is mine, body is mine, body is mine, that kind of uh, attitude he created. I'm here, Sangni Panchendriya Manusya Jeev, a five sense sentient being. And I also say the same thing, that body is mine, body is mine. So, because I'm doing this kind of thing for since time infinite, so it becomes second nature for me. And that's why it appears to be easy for going back into the deluded state. And then it becomes kind of difficult for somebody to go into the innate nature because he ignored the innate nature forever. So this is what it says in this stanza. We just went up to 12 stanzas. So now we'll start at uh, 12 slides. So we'll start with 13 stanza, uh, 13 slides. <clears throat> In the 13th verse, this slide it says, in the lowest form of life, that is Nigod, there is only one sense. <clears throat> there are infinite amount number of living beings that they have never, never, ever come out of this Nigod. They are there since time infinite. They're born. And, day, and then they die save 18 times in one second. One swast means one second approximately. So in one second having birth for 18 times and death for 18 times and going on since time infinite, they've never come out. They have only one sense and that's a touch sensation. So they have never experienced anything else. Then, in this stanza, it says that one has never heard the story of inclination of attachment. Uh, I mean, how did they hear the story of inclination of attachment? This stanza says hearing, hearing, hearing. There is a lots of weight given to the word hearing. What hearing means? Hearing means, we just saw the previous slide. Hearing means, it is, it is the one in which I heard and then accordingly, I put it into my action and that is called correct hearing. So now this soul, this Nigod soul has never come out. Never come out of the one sense life only. So how did he quote unquote, hear this inclination of attachment? Well, let's see what, what this author wants to uh, convey to us. Uh, let me put this guys out here. <clears throat> okay, so they do not have idea of innate nature, but they experience nature of inclusive of attachment. This living being in Nigod, the one sense life, the 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 one sense life which take birth and death 18 times a second, then they have experienced influence of attachment. What influence of attachment they have experienced? Body is mine, body is mine, body is mine. That kind of influence of attachment they have it. Because they have influence of attachment with the body. Remember, I had the, in, in my Mithyatva Gunsthanak, 
I have attachment with the body. The heavenly angels, they have attachment with the body. Hellish soul, they have attachment with the body. So is a subhuman, means uh, uh, animals and plants, they all have inclusion of attachment with the body. And so this nigot cell also has inclusion of attachment with the body. Every transmigratory living being, they have inclusion of attachment with the body, with the alien objects, but that alien objects, we are going to tell that this is body. So I'm the body, I'm the body, I'm the body, that kind of idea keeps on going with me every moment, every summit. So much, this is my second nature to say that I'm the body. Even when I'm sleeping, I continue to feel that I'm the body. How? Because I'm sleeping and I'm sleeping on my back. Now, after, after about an hour or two or whatever time, my back starts hurting. So I take turn and I sleep on the side, one side, and then the other side. So this kind of thing that body's mind is going on even when I'm sleeping and I'm in an awake situation. So similarly, this nigot cell also has, a, uh, he does not have any idea of unique nature, but he has experienced inclusive attachment in this life, in, in that life. Actually what happens, we all were in nigod life at one point. But while we have the one sense only, and that's a touch sense, but I have the part of knowledge. And that, because of that knowledge, the soul, the, the, the nigot soul keeps on making inclusion of attachment and aversion, rag and dvesh. And when that rag means auspicious dealings increases in certain intensity, that this cell is able to come out of the nigod life and comes to one sense and then becomes two cents and three cents and four cents and five cents and all kind of thing. So we all were in nigod to start with. And when we did increase in the auspicious inclination that we were able to come out of the nigod. Now, so, so doing the auspicious activity or inauspicious process, it is common to all the living being in transmigratory life, whether you are in Nigod, whether you are Sangni Panchindriya Jeev, whether you are lowest form of living being, or whether you are in the five sense sentient being. So having said that, let's see next one. Uh, okay. That means they have heard, familiarized, and experienced it because they have inclusion of attachment experience. Because they say that body is mine, body is mine, body is mine, and because body is mine, that kind of attitude this nigot cell has it. That's why when the death occurs, this in, intense pain occurs. When this birth occurs, intense pain occurs and that is occurring 18 times a second you can imagine how much suffering how much pain how much uh, agony this cell can have it so because he is constantly in the increase of attachment and aversion state that's why you can deduce and say that they have heard familiarized and experienced it over here, word heart becomes kind of secondary, but they have experienced it. That's more important. Same thing over here for human being also. For me, that I have heard means of Gnani Purush, the enlightened true teacher, go, gave me the message. I heard, then I familiarize, and I experience, and that is the one can be said that now I have truly heard the story of the uh, real nature of the soul. <coughs> Excuse me. So similar, this, this nigod cell also has 
because he is in English of attachment, so he has heard, familiarized, and experienced it. Living being also has taken monkhood with total nudity, but he's also with the external clad monk. Remember, when we talk about the nigod cell, the lowest cell in the category, lowest living being, that also has influence of attachment and aversion. And, and in, a, in a five sense, sentient being as a human being, that living being takes monkhood. He becomes uh, uh, totally naked Digamber monk. But he remains as an external clad monk only. External clad monk means Dravya Muni. There are two, two types of things that we have to talk Dravya Muni and Bhav Muni. Bhav Muni means the person who has experienced self within and he's trying to get engrossed within as much as possible, then externally he will be seen as a naked monk with 28 primary virtues that he's going to follow. Because he has internally experienced the self, and intensity of that experience is increasing day by day, moment by moment, that Externally, we can also see that he has naked, he has total nakedness is there. He is not taking shower, he's not brushing his teeth, and there are all these virtues are there. But there are also some other people, some other living being, other human being, that they just simply take the diksha, they take the monkhood, they become naked monks they observe 28 primary virtue appropriate for the monk but they have not experienced the inner things they have not experienced the inner self and that's why they are called external clad monk or dravya lingi muni one who has experienced the self within and intensifying his experience within and externally, he is also seen as a naked monk. Then he is called Bhav Lingi Muni because he has experienced the self within. And the other person who does not have experience, but he just simply took the clothes off. And not only clothes off, but he also is observing all the virtues that a monk is supposed to observe. But he has not experienced inner self, and that's why it's called Dravya Lingi Muni. So, this Dravya Lingi Muni also, he has not experienced the real nature of the self, and so he is also called to be in the inclusion of attachment phase only. So, the, the, we are using two extremes over here. One is a Nigod cell. That's the lowest possible category of the transmigratory soul. And one is a highest category like monkhood, but it's an external clad monk, Dravya Lingi Muni. So they all, in between everybody else, they all have inclusive of attachment phase, Rag Dasa. So this, this external clad monk, the Dravya Lingi Muni, he also has liking for inclusion of attachment and continues his journey through infinite transmigration. How many, <clears throat> how many times I may have taken monkhood? I, you know, my existence as a soul is there for time infinite. And in that time infinite, infinite times I may have taken monkhood without realizing my true nature of the self. And so that did not become very helpful to me because so I was an external clad monk. I was a Dravya Lingi Muni, but without any internal experience. And that's why first come to words, I did lots of auspicious uh, 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 um, thought process and as a result I may have gone to uh, heavenly heavenly soul 
and I may have stayed there for a long time and then came out again and continued my transmigratory wandering again and again and again. So without understanding, remember Tatvat Sutra, first chapter, first first stanza, it says, Samyak Darshan Gnan Charitrani Hi Mokshmargaha means unity of right faith, right knowledge, and right conduct is a pathway to the liberation. The very first thing it says, right faith, right knowledge. And thereafter, right conduct comes. I want to also observe conduct, right conduct. But if I start observing right conduct without right faith and right knowledge, then it is going to be, I acquire zero. I may have so many zeros I acquired, but because I don't have number one, those zeros have no value. So that will again take me to transmigratory cycle. So here to take home message is one has to take extra effort to understand the real nature of the soul. And once I understand real nature of the soul, then I can, that is again reflective stage, a reflective thought process. Once I understand that part, then I continued my journey going within. Once I experienced myself, then the real conduct starts and then right faith, right knowledge, right conduct, unity is a pathway to the liberation. So having said that, now we are going to change the gear. This, this stanza mainly wanted us to know Panch Paravartan because what it says before, that we have heard the story of transmigration. We have experienced the inclusion of attachment and aversion. I have experienced rag and dvesh, which is difficult to start with because from my innate nature I have to come out. And when I come out from my innate nature, then I become in deluded state. But from time infinite, I keep on doing this, this, this situation all the time, continuously, continuously, that it has become my second nature. So what is Panch Paravartan? So my existence is since time infinite. When we say time infinite, time infinite, time infinite, what does time infinite means? So here in a, Kartika Anupraksha stanza 66, it just explains that there are five types of cycle of wandering. Dravya, Kshatra, Kal, Bhav and Bhav Paravartan. Or cycle, cycle of change of matter, space, time, incarnation and thoughts. We have to try to understand one at a time what this means. That will give us the scope of our existence and how long am I existing? Mahavi Swami, we just celebrated the Mahavi Janma Kalyanak celebration this Sunday and of course uh, everybody else, everywhere else they celebrated. Mahavi Swami, it was 2614th year of birth, birth year and it looks far in the past excuse me, far, far, far away in the past, 2614 years. <clears throat> when we talk one Chauvisi from Rushab Dev to Mahavi Swami, that whole time is a, almost one Kroda Krodi Sagropam. Means, one Kroda Krodi means 10 rest to 14 Sagropam years. 10 rest to 14 when we say million is a nine digits, billion is a 12 digit, and 15 digits is trillions. So 100 billion, right? So 100 billion Sagropam years passed by between Rishabh Dev and Mahavishram. And as we say Sagropam means four mile width, length, and deep ditch, you dig it out, fill it out with the very silky hair of the newly born ship. And 
also that hair you cut it into pieces so many pieces that you cannot make two pieces out of it again have this hair and fill it out this ditch completely so much that the chariot of the king passing by and there won't be any uh, uh, any dip coming up that kind of feeling that you do it every hundred years you take one hair out one piece of hair out how many years it will take it will take quarters innumerable uh, 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 infinite number of years and that is called one paleopum ear this one paleopum ear times 10 raised to 14 paleopum ears will make one sagropum ear a 10 raised to 14 sagropum ears is a time passed by between Rishabh Dev and Mahaviswami. Think about the time now, how much it is. Huge amount of time, huge, huge. But it doesn't stop there. Now author is taking us into the abyss and tells that I'm going to talk to you punch paravartan and just say how long are you existing? So let's talk about the one, one of the Paravartan at a time. Cycle of matter, <coughs> Dravya Paravartan or Dravya Parivartan, whatever, both are same words. So Dravya Parivartan is related to matter, par, uh, matter particles acceptance and renunciation. It could be of two types. Quasi karma cycle of matter means no karma. And karmic cycle of matter means karma paravartan so this is cycle of matter related to quasi karma and karma and we'll come back later on we'll just see all the five names first second is the cycle of space kshetra parivartan means to touch the space point of the space related cycle again we'll be going detail about it then comes cycle of time kal paravartan Cycle related to having birth and death related to a time cycle. Again, just go through the names. We'll familiarize with the name first. Cycle of incarnation, Bhav Paravartan, to accept birth and death related to infernal etc. realms. And last one is a cycle of thoughts, Bhav Paravartan. Remember, this is this is Bhav Paravartan. This is Bhav Paravartan. Baum in cycle of incarnation, Baum in cycle of thoughts. Having changing occurring due to passion and yoga related births and deaths. These are five types of paravartans that is explaining to us about the macro time. What's a macroscopic time? So <clears throat> let's go through the cycle of matter first, Dravya Paravartan. Transmigratory soul keeps on accepting material karma particles, that's a karma, and quasi karma particles, that's a no karma. For example, here I am, I'm the human being, and when I came to the mother's womb, then I started accepting material karma and a quasi karma particles to make my body. To make my body in certain way, I started accepting material karma and quasi karma. Now, time to time, he also discards some of these particles in the future. For example, my hair grows up, then I cut it out. My nails grow up, I cut it out. My skin starts shading. Then, then the new skin comes and everything. So those are the things that I accept the material particle and I also discard these material particles in the future. And this process keeps on going and going and going and going for forever. Now, in first summary, what happens in Dravya Paravardhan? In first summary, take, take a given summary. Right, right now, for example, we can just say, this summer means uh, uh, 9.30 p.m. on uh, April 8th, 2015. And we just take that time. 
in that time living being has accepted those particles with their own unique intensity of greasiness, dryness, color, taste, smell, etc. Means right now I'm accepting certain particles. They have the unique intensity of their characteristics of greasiness, dryness, color, taste, smell, etc. All the attributes of the uh, matter particles. So certain types of particle in certain intensity, I'm accepting it. <clears throat> at the same time, at the same time, I may have my own intense, medium or mild inclinations could be present. So two things we are putting over here. The matter particle I'm accepting in which they have their peculiar greasiness, dryness, color, taste, smell, etc. present. And at the same time, my own internal intentions of medium, mild or intense passions are present. So these two things are unique. Uh, two things are unique that we have to accept it. Number one, from the matter particles, their own peculiar characteristics. And second thing, my own internal situation in which I have intense, medium or mild passions are present. Now, this Samai, 9.30 p.m., and on this April 8th, 2015, in this summer, I accepted these particles in this way. Now, when exactly the same situation occurs again in the future, with similar karma, karma and similar self-inclinations are present, then it is a one cycle of matter is completed. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> So, exact nature, whatever is right now, and same thing happens in future. When will it happen? I don't know. It takes millions and billions. Million billion is not a right number to use. It is an infinite number of years will pass by. That same exact thing will happen. So, between now, 9.30 p.m. April 8th, 2015 and the future time after infinite number of years exact same situation occurred then we can just say one Dravya Paravartan passed by. Then infinite such cycle passed by so far in my existence. To start with this, this thing to happen again, it is next to impossible to happen. But suppose it happened, then author says that infinite such type of situation has passed by in the future. Imagine how long am I existing. This gives an absolute macro timing for my existence. When I say infinite, it doesn't mean that this Chauvi see only. This Chauvisi, and in this one, the infinite number of Chauvisis pass by. <clears throat> one Chauvisi to pass by. One Chauvisi means one, one set of 24 Tirthankar occurring in, a, in, in, in succession. It takes 10 Kroda Krodi Sagropam years. 10 raised to 14. So 10 Kroda Krodi. No, Sagropam years, and that will have only one Chauvisi, one set of 24 Tirthankar will occur. This kind of, when we are talking about this kind of a cycle of matter, in this one alone, alone, infinite number of 24 sets of Tirthankar came and went to Moksha. And and those kind of infinite such cycle passed by so far since then I'm existing. So one can imagine how long am I existing. When I say infinite, means it just dilutes its nature, but now it just 
opens my eyes and says, oh my God, is that true? Yes, it is. Then, as we said uh, here, that there is a quasi-cycle, there's a quasi-karma cycle of matter, karma cycle of matter. We talk karma cycle of matter first right now. Now we are talking quasi-karma cycle matter. So what does that mean? That means three forms of body and six types of capacity to develop three shari and six paryapti. What are those things that we have to talk about? Number one, gross and fluid body, electric and common bodies. Now, humans and subhumans. Humans, animals, and plants. Animals and plants are considered as a subhumans. So humans, animals, and plants, they are the one that they have the gross bodies. They have the gross body. Gross body means the, the, the particle specialized to form body like me in which if I fall down right now, I can get fracture. If I just uh, 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 remain healthy, I'm okay to hang around for 70, 80, 90, God knows whatever number of years. So that's called gross bodies. The plants, whatever the bodies they have, it's called gross body. The animals, whatever the body they have it, it's called gross bodies. They will decay. Once the death occurs, then they will decay. And that's called gross body. So these are specific types of um, metal particles. They're specialized in the form of making it gross bodies. Okay. Then there is a other kind of body. It's called fluid body. Fluid body is kind of body that you know uh, the, the the heavenly angels and infernal lives infernal uh, uh, narki jeev and devgati jeev those two forms of living beings they will have fluid body the the uh, example we can try to give is think about mercury what happened to mercury Mercury, you put it out, it will just divide into several, several pieces. And then when you get it together, it will become one globe. One globe, and then it will just again go into different pieces. Same with this fluid body, it can be cut into different pieces, and then it will come back again, and it will become one body again. The, the <coughs> The easiest thing we can try to understand is um, when we see the it, uh, Terminator movie. Get it? Yes. Get it, Bhai? Yeah, well. Gujarati ma fluid body ne shu ke vai? Ab apne vaikriyas, vaikriyas shari. Oh, okay. Thank you. Vaikriyas shari. Alle dev naar ki dev vaikriyas shari. And uh, uh, Tyrians and a uh, human audaric uh, uh, Audaric means gross. So this fluid body, Vaikriya Sharir, the, the example again, because you guys have seen those movie Terminator 2 or 1, I guess, in which the policeman he's coming after uh, uh, the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then uh, Arnold throws that uh, uh, gasoline tank and uh, he just puts the fire and everything and this uh, the, 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 this guy just burns out completely and then suddenly he just comes out and stands up and becomes another uh, again he becomes the uh, uh, policeman similar concept is a fluid body that uh, heavenly angels they will also change their form of body in different different ways and everything. Or the hellish soul. Hellish soul, when, when, a hell, when, when, when the soul is in the hell, he will keep on suffering from all the bad deeds that he has done before and karma fruition will be there. And he will get into, it is extremely hot, so he likes to sit down under a tree called Semar, Semar Taru, Semar tree. Semar tree underneath when he sits down, the, the leaves they fall down 
and when the leaves they fall down, they will cut his body into several pieces. And again, those body will become one again. So these are kind of fluid body. So number one, either gross or fluid body, number one body. Second is called electric body, which is called Tejas Sharir. And third is called Karman Sharir, Karman body. We'll, we'll talk about what, 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 what Tejas Sharir means. Tejas Sharir means electric body. As soon as soul, me as a soul, go uh, come to come in existence in a mother's womb i come let's say i was animal and from animal i died as an animal and then within maximum three semi i came back to my new birthplace <coughs> as soon as i come as a new birthplace i'm going to be human so I'll start getting, I, I, my soul start collecting all the gross body particles. Plus, I come with the electric body with me, Tejas Sharir with me. So whatever particles are accepted by the soul, then electric body starts digesting those uh, uh, particles, producing heat for those particles, and that way this body starts taking shape. You know, the, the very, very informative thing that if you, if, 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 if you're a medical person and when you read the uh, uh, human embryology and how the soul comes to the mother's womb and start accepting gross particles and everything, there's exact similarity it says. So, I mean, you know, the science has proven from that perspective, how the human body develops, and our philosophy has told exact same thing. If we cannot, if we don't accept philosophy, which is age old, infinity years old, at least we can say Mahavir told that philosophy 2514, 2614 years before, at least he gave us the idea which is exactly the same as human embryology that has been taught in the medical school. So, <clears throat> this, fluid, um, this the electric body is called Tejas Sharir. Remember, a, a person is right now alive and now he stops breathing. You go and touch the body. What do you say? My God, there is no breathing, there is no pulse, and the body is ice cold. What do you mean by ice cold? Because that electric body, which was part of the existence, went out with the soul, and that's why that body became very cold. The heat generated within me is because of electric body, Tejas Sharir. So that's the second part of body. And then third part is called Karman body. Karma Sharir. Karman body means as a transmigratory soul, when I'm traveling from one life to the another life, then I am I'm traveling as a soul, and I, I along with my me as a soul, I have electric body with me, and my karman body is with me. Karman body means all the eight types of karma that they have uh, they, that I have accumulated, they stay with me in the transmigratory form and then whenever I go they, they come with me there. So upon my trans, the transit from one life to other life, electric body, karman body and soul, three things will travel together. So now we are talking, what, what are we talking here? Three forms of body and six types of capacity to develop. So three bodies, either gross or fluid, Audaric or Vaikriya, one, electric number two, Tejas Sharir number two, Karman Sharir number three. Karman means all the eight karma that I have accepted, they are in a dormant state with me, they will do it. So these are the three bodies, okay? Now, the six types of Paryapti, six types of capacity to develop, what are those things? Food particle means Ahar Vargana. Let's go through the name and then we'll just discuss about it. Speech particle, Bhasha Vargana. Mind particle, Mano Vargana. 
सेंस पार्टिकल इंद्रिय वर्गना बॉडी पार्टिकल शरीर वर्गना एंड रेस्पिट पार्टिकल सासोसास वर्गना ना व्हाट हैपेंस दैट दी मैटर द मैटर मिस पुतगल दे आर डिवाइडेड इनटू ट्वेंटी थ्री सब ग्रुप्स एंड आउट ऑफ दोस थ्री सब ट्वेंटी थ्री सब ग्रुप्स देर आर सर्टेन पार्टिकल दे हैव कैपेसिटी इज अ फूड पार्टिकल्स ओनली other one has a capacity as a speech particles third one has a specialized into the mind particles fourth one is specialized into speech particles somebody is special into body particles and other one is special into respiratory particles and there are other other forms are there also so these are the types of particles then there is electric particles carmen particles fluid body particles so so many particles are there so when 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 soul take comes to mother's womb right now then first thing it it will stay the soul will start accepting food particles speech particle will be there mind particle will be there sense particle and all the six particles is six types of capacity to develop these are very for example think about the the seed a given seed has a capacity to blossom into a big huge tree because it has all those capacity hidden within same thing here all these particles they have the capacity for uh, develop into the uh, speech uh, speech unit in the future or mind unit in the future or as a, a senses uh, senses in the future body as a future and breathing so these are the capacities are there and these six capacities in three forms of bodies they will make cycle of quasi karma means no karma dravya paravartan now one more thing we can just pull, speak over here the six capacity to develop remember in a, when when the soul comes out of the nigod very first time i came out of the nigod so lowest form of life and by virtue of my good good thing that i had done there in in this is auspiciousness increase and in in auspiciousness decrease and as a result finally i came up okay i came out of nigod then when i came out of nigod i am in a one sense life means a water body fire body air body earth bodies and all those five types of plant bodies and everything so five types of bodies i am i am in then They, they they are still called immobile bodies the tree cannot move by itself earth cannot move by itself so these are the bodies that these are the one sense lives that cannot move so they are called immobile form of bodies immobile form of living beings and then he will come to the two sense life beindriya amoeba type of things so it it will be able to move by itself when the life enters into this movable form of living being the that time is a 2000 sagar 2000 sagropam remember sagropam means we already talked about but uh, 10 raised to 14 palyopam is one sagropam that kind of 2000 sagropam i am in the thrust nadi thrust nadi means i am capable of myself to move around that 2000 sagropam years once in that 2000 sagropam years i can get 48 times as a human body see it's very interesting now i can have 48 chances to become human human in that 2000 sagar out of which out of the 20 uh, 48 uh, human being a uh, human lives 24 are gone 
because they were not able to have all the six types of capacity to develop at the beginning. So the soul comes in the mother's womb and this is gone because the six paryaptis, he was not able to capture those six paryaptis and so he died. So 24 lives went out just like that. So remaining 24 are with me. Out of which eight are man, eight are as woman, and eight as a hermaphrodite. So I have very limited number of lives in this 2000 Sagropam. Once I finish this 2000 Sagropam time, I go back to Nigod again, in which I will stay there forever and ever and ever and ever. I mean, to be exact, two and a half. Um, put, uh, so when the soul accepts now here no karma dravya paravartan when soul accepts same with same intensity of all this then it is one cycle of quasi karma of exact three types of body six types of uh, development all those things exactly occurring now and in the future again, that time period passed by, which will be called one no karma dravya paravartan, or it's called cycle of quasi karma. How many years passed by? Billion, I mean, infinite number of sagropam years passed by. <coughs> then, Living being accept eight types of karma with their own characteristics, right? We know that uh, 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 that eight types of karma uh, karmas are there. Four types are uh, ghati karma, four types of uh, ghati karma. So living being keeps on accepting uh, eight types of karma. When he accepts the same in the future with the exact same characteristic, then it is one cycle of karma. What did we say here? that eight types of karma and when these eight types of karma are there you also have your internal uh, soul's condition mild medium intense passion so particular types of uh, eight types of karma coming and that particular type of uh, intention of passions occurring together then it will become one cycle of karma and then we also all talk about no karma cycle. Time for cycle of karma and quasi karma is the same, which is infinite, 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 infinite number, but both are remaining same. So this is called cycle of karma, means dravya paravartan. So this is first time, the first thing that we finish. Now we are going to talk about cycle of space, kshetra paravartan. What does kshetra paravartan mean? <coughs> Kshetra Paravartan means, let's imagine this, not image, let, let's, let, let's visualize the uh, cosmic space. Cosmic space is 14 Raju. 14 Raju is a huge, huge, huge distance. We don't want to go into detail about that one right now because that will be digression too much. But this Lokakash, is a huge space. This Lokakash means a swarg, I mean, upper world, middle world, and lower world. Urdhva Lok, Madhya Lok, Adho Lok. Adho Lok means Narak, middle world means uh, ourself, human being where they live, and uh, Urdhva Lok means Dev and uh, uh, liberated soul, Siddha Bhagwan lives, that's called Urdhva Lok. That whole thing <coughs> is called Lokakash. So when in when a moonless night, if I look into the sky and I see galaxies, Milky Way, when I see Milky Way, there are infinite amount of galaxies are there, infinite number of a sun systems are there, just like our sun. So those are the things are part of the cosmic space. 
down below when you go, there are seven hells are there. They are also part of the cosmic space. So this cosmic space is huge. Now, <clears throat> let's take this room here right now. And I divide into two and then further divide into two and again and again and again and again and again and again. And finally, I come to a point in which <clears throat> I cannot divide it further into extra two pieces. So when that thing happens, that teeny tiny area of the space is called one space point. How many space points are there in this universe? There are uh, innumerable space points are there. Here. Now what we are talking is living being takes birth in one space point. Let's take <coughs> one space point out of all this innumerable space point in this universe. And one says that, okay, I'm born in this place. Let's give that one as number one. So I, I'm born at number one. And then maybe I did bad things. So I went to hell. Or I did good. So I went to the heaven. Or I was kind of a crooked nature. So I went to the animal life. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I went to different places. Transmigratory cycle. I kept on wandering here and there. And one time again, I came back to the number two place. And took the birth there. That is called two. In between all the number of years passed by, they are not counted. Only number two means you are coming next point and you are taking the birth. Thereafter, you went to all this transmigratory running around and you went to different places and uh, all kind of things you passed by. And again, you came to the third space point. That's number three. Like this, in succession, when you finish all this space point, birth and death together, then the time taken is called one kshetra paravartan, I mean one cycle of space. Can you, be, can you imagine how much it is? So, living being takes birth in one space point, then goes to another space point for the birth. <coughs> when it comes back to the second space point in the in linear way, then it's called second birth. Similarly, when living being finishes all space points in order and in lineage, then it is one cycle of space. How much time passed by? Gosh, now we start, we, 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 we are losing the track of time right now. We are losing the track of time, but at the same time, we are also trying to finish over here. It's almost one hour passed by. So <coughs> having, <coughs> having said that Dravya Paravartan and Kshetra Paravartan, means it gives us immense amount of idea who am I and how long I'm existing and how long I will be existing again in the future because any amount of time passed by so far we just take or talk about only two paravartan only dravya and kshetra paravartan any amount of time passed by so far, infinite, infinite, infinite amount of time passed by so far, I am going to have infinite time that infinite uh, that I have passed by. If, if I have, have passed by the time which is X, infinite times X is the time remaining in the future. Well, there is nothing like remaining because I'm going to be there forever. I was never been born. I will never been destroyed. I was never been created. I'll never be destroyed. I'm there all the time. So this is what it tells us. It gives immense at the nature of uh, deep thinking of our Acharyas and our Tirthankar Bhagwan to give us some idea who we are, where we are. So having talked talk about this one, we will continue with the next one, uh, next, uh, next cycle of space and everything. Uh, we finish Dravya and Kshetra. Kaal, Bhavna, Bhav, we have to finish. Then we'll just take it next time. Uh, let's go through questions if you have any.
Any questions? Are you all okay? Um, yeah. Kirtanko, we can, I yeah. think you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I don't have a question. Um, I'm just taking it all in right now, but thank you. Okay, no problem, no problem, that's good. Yeah, I'm kidding. No, we're good. Okay, all right. Then let's do the closing now. <clears throat> Sarva Mangala Mangalyam Sarva Kalyana Karakam Pradhanam Sarva Dharmanam Jainam Jaitu Sasanam Jainam Jaitu Sasanam Javani Ke Gyan Se Suje Loka Lok Sovani Mastaka Namo Sada Deta Hundo No Banamo Kamantra We'll meet you next next week, okay? Okay. Bye. Okay.